Welcome to this episode of On Photography. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about infrared photography. I've been doing infrared photography for many years now, and I really enjoy it. And it's a little bit of a mystery to some folks, so uh, hopefully in this episode, I'm going to demystify a little bit of this. So on the bench here, I've got a couple of my infrared cameras. So this one has been professionally converted to infrared. Uh, this is an old Nikon, and... Um, so this one's been professionally, and I'll talk about the conversion process in a minute. This one's been professionally converted. And this one here, this Sony, this is actually one of the infamous um, I can see through closed cameras that they discontinued. And with this, uh, it has a night shot mode, and the night shot mode is what allows it to take infrared photography. Now, this one requires an infrared filter in front of it, where this one has a built-in infrared filter inside of it. Because the way a CCD or a CMOS, which is the sensors in these cameras that collect the uh, photons or the light, work, is they have like, sort of like buckets, and they collect the photons in the buckets. The buckets create electrons, and the electronics read the electrons and, and determine the intensity and color uh, of the light from that. Now, what happens is these guys are really sensitive uh, to uh, what's called near-infrared because we have a couple, a little bit of a spectrum. So let's back up a little bit and let's talk about the spectrum of light. Up in the corner, I'll put a spectrum up there. So you notice violet on the very far side is the most energetic or the shortest wavelength. Whereas you get to your deep reds on the other side, those are the longer wavelengths. So now I want to explain wavelengths in, in, for example, lengths of string. So I have these two lengths of string here. This short length is actually a piece of blue light. And this long string here is actually a length of beginning of infrared light, or about 950 nanometers. So light is measured in, in nanometers, and basically the bottom of the spectrum, which we can see, is about around 450 nanometers, which is a blue light. Now, as you move up, you know, you move into the blues, the greens, then the reds, and that's why, you know, it's blue, green, red. And so the further up that scale you go, the longer the wavelength gets and the less energetic the light gets, but the longer the wave. So this is one of the things I think is a little bit of a misnomer, is people tend to think of infrared light as very energetic. It isn't. Actually, it's just the opposite. It's less energetic, but it's very large. So basically, you can think of um, blue light or violet light being like a BB gun where you're pelted with a bunch of BBs and with infrared light with this longer wave you're actually like being hit with a sledgehammer. This is uh, why infrared light will pass through some things is it contains a lot more uh, I don't want to say mass or energy but it's a it's a much longer wavelength so it's not as susceptible to bouncing off things or, or, or reflections and that kind of stuff. So you can think of it this way you know, so you'd have to have two of these to make up one of these guys. So you can pump in more of these, but when this guy comes, he's going to carry a lot of weight. And again, this is why these cameras have hot mirrors, or what's referred to as a hot mirror, in front of the CCD or CMOS to, to knock these guys down to kind of balance out the workload a little bit. So when we remove that hot mirror and place a filter, or you know, a near-infrared filter on there, what we're doing is we're blocking out this guy, and we're saying we really want this guy. Now, this is going to do a couple different things. Infrared um, light uh, tends to be a very narrow bandwidth of light. So, as you can see, I've got uh, a very low band infrared filter here. This is uh, a little short of 700 nanometers. So, this is just entering the near infrared because one of the things we should also talk about. These cameras are only going to photograph near infrared. Now you say, Joe, but what about in, what about you know infrared cameras, the type we see with heat? Well, here, for example, is my FLIR camera. Now this is a long infrared because the spectrum of infrared is very very large. This guy, the wavelength that comes into him is very very large. Matter of fact, it's so large we feel it, and that's called heat. And so that's why we feel heat is because it's so long. It, we actually can feel its impact upon us. With shorter near infrared, we we obviously can't feel that because it's it's far closer to visible light than it is heat. 
And there's a very wide spectrum for that. So that kind of explains how that works. Now, the other interesting thing, why would you want to do infrared? Now, infrared is great, especially if you're into, um, you know, black and white photography. And that's one of the things I'm very much into is black and white photography. And that's one of the reasons I like near-infrared is it gets a very, very sharp image. Because one of the problems that you have is a lens focusing. So now if I bring back this blue light... This blue light is going to focus at a far closer length than this red light up here. And so what these lenses have to do for the whole range of visible light is compromise, if you will, that its focal range. Now, if I just focus, pardon the pun, on just infrared, that narrows it down. This means I can get a very sharp picture. And actually, you can, uh, you know, sometimes infrared imaging is used to really... Uh, uh, cracks and things like that really stand out because now you're getting a very sharp representation of that split rather than a fuzzy one with all the different colors of, of light and standard color. So you can get some really interesting perspectives of things um, shooting infrared. The other interesting thing is we have the wood effect. And the wood effect is, I believe it's Robert Wood named after him, uh, is the, uh, the fact that some things like green foliage tend to reflect more infrared light because what's happening is, is this big wave is hitting that leaf or what have you and it's bouncing back up because it's so big it's being rejected back and being reflected. So a lot of greenery, things with chlorophyll, etc., tend to uh, to reflect the infrared light, which makes them white. It makes them very bright to the camera sensor because so much is being reflected. So you get that very unique effect of trees turning white and things like that. You also get a black sky. Now, the other piece to talk about and why I have both of these cameras is they really do two different things. Now, this guy here, this, this Nikon, this is like a 950 nanometer camera, where this guy over here is about a 760. So the, the difference between the two, when you start getting up around 900, you're really talking about a pure black and white play. When you're talking down around 700, uh, nanometers, you're talking about a full color because what you can do, and what I do with this guy, is I uh, invert the red and blue channels in like Photoshop. And what happens is you start to get like a blue sky uh, because you switched it out for the red. So you can get a lot of really, really interesting effects um, shooting in infrared. Uh, you can get a lot of different depths. Uh, things become very sharp, as I mentioned. Um, so very interesting to play with. Now, there's a lot of places. I'll have some links below uh, to where you can get some modified cameras, a modified camera like this one that's been professionally modified. I've also modified a number of my own. I don't suggest that for the faint of heart. It's not easy to do because you literally have to disassemble it. You have to have it in a very clean space because you're going to remove the hot mirror in front of the CCD and you cannot get any dust on anything, not even a microscopic piece of dust. Or you basically have ruined your camera. So un unless you feel really brave like that, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I've ruined one or two cameras in my time, and I've probably done seven or eight um, cameras because not all are particular. Now, because a lot of times you have to remove the focusing mechanisms and all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyways, uh, that aside, I'll have some links below. There's a number of them out there and uh, you can get them. The other thing you can do, you can use your regular camera, even with a hot mirror in place, to take infrared pictures because you can simply get yourself an infrared filter, put it on top, put it on a tripod, and do a very long exposure. Now, again, uh, these cameras will shoot in real time. They're actually very sensitive cameras. Um, and actually with this guy, I've got to actually dumb them down with some ND filters on top of the infrared because he is so sensitive. So uh, he, he, so you don't have to spend seconds. You can shoot in 60 of a second infrared, a near-infrared image. But if you have the hot mirror, you're going to probably on some cameras have to wait up to a couple minutes uh, for that infrared image to materialize with the filter. But you can still do it. And it is a lot of fun. It's something different to try, um, especially in landscape photography and things like that where you're shooting a big expansive uh, picture.
So hopefully this answered some of the questions on infrared photography. If it didn't, hit me up in the comments below. Or hey, if you're doing infrared photography, let me know in the comments. Maybe something cool or interesting. Uh, just as a little bit of a sidebar, um, you know, there's different genres of this too. Because there's ultraviolet photography I've experimented with. Um, there's oxygen spectrum line photography I've experimented with. So uh, all kinds of cool stuff you can do. And I'll talk about some of this stuff in future episodes if you guys are interested about some of this more uh, wanky type of photography and some of the effects because you can really do some cool stuff. So anyways, again, hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, also, subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. Please hit the subscribe button. And hey, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.